My name is Scott Urbis, and I will be your host today. I'll also be the presenter, and I'm the uh, civil training content manager as well as a senior content engineer here at Bentley. And today we're going to be talking about using and defining super elevations. So I got a lot of stuff to cover, and uh, hopefully I can get that done in a timely manner. So today's agenda kind of looks like this. As far as the topics go related to super elevation, we're going to discuss the super elevation XML rules file a little bit. We're going to talk about creating super elevation sections and lanes, talk about calculating the super elevation transitions, super elevation reports, importing super elevation. So we'll show you how to import it from a spreadsheet if you don't like to use the uh, calculations in, in the software. We're also going to talk a little bit about the difference between rules-based super elevation and versus non-rules-based. We'll get into a little bit of editing super elevation and assigning super elevation to a corridor. And then I got a couple tips and tricks for you as we get towards the end. So I'm going to jump into the software and just get rolling here. So what we're going to be doing today is so we're just going to be kind of going through one of our existing courses that course is called using and defining super elevation it can be found on the learn server so everything i'm showing here today is pretty much covered in that course so we're going to be using that data data set as well as some of the uh, the concepts and workflows that are in that course so also going to be throwing in some tidbits here and there some extra tidbits along the way so we're going to be taking a look at is creating super elevation for this roadway here this is the state route 97 corridor state route 97 extension alignment so we're going to first start off by creating the super elevation for this road this is a divided highway and uh, i'm going to show you just how some of the the basic functions work with some of these super elevation tools that we have okay so we're starting off inside of a, a dgn file here it's essentially a blank file and i just have my uh, geometry referenced in so if i take a look at my reference files here you can see i just referenced in all my geometry inside my file so to begin creating super elevation you generally want to be in a 2d file and you usually need to have your geometry attached as a reference file okay so the general workflow or some of the tools that we have available for super elevation is you want to first create your super elevation section that defines the limits of the super elevation then you need to define your super elevation lanes it's going to you need to define the number of lanes the width of the lanes and all that we have special tools that can do that and then from there you want to calculate your transitions and your cross slopes and there's a couple different ways you can do that you can utilize the super elevation rules file that we deliver with the product that will calculate the super elevation for you with the software or if you want, you can do the rules, the non-rules based approach where you can import super elevation from a spreadsheet. So I'll show you both ways to do that. And then the other step, the final step is once you do all that, then you have to associate the corridor to the super elevation shapes. So we'll talk about all these topics here today. So before we begin, I just want to talk a little bit about the super elevation XML rules file. If you've used some of our older products in the past, such as Geopack and Inroads, you're probably familiar with like an SEP file or a SUP file that had your super elevation information stored in it, had all the, the tables and equations and things like that. Well, in Open Roads Designer, we don't have the SEP and the SUP files. Those have been replaced with what we call the super elevation XML rules file. Okay, so all of that super elevation, all those equations and that information that you need uh, is stored in this XML rules file. Okay, so the rules file kind of looks like this if you were to look at it in a text editor, but um, to make it more user friendly, we have a special dialog box that reads all that information and gives you the ability to customize and uh, make adjustments as necessary. So it's basically the file that's going to be used to calculate your super elevation rates for each curve and transition lengths and all your rotations that need to happen as it relates to uh, to super elevation. Okay, so now it's important to understand how this rules file works. Like a lot of agencies will have this already set up and ready to go for you. So generally, you don't really need to, to, to do anything over here. Any work that you would need to do is maybe some minor adjustments inside of the dialog box here. 
So how is this XML rule, XML rule file? How is it processed? It's first going to look at the, the max E rate from the table or the equation. And it's going to do the transition length that's calculated either from a table or an equation. It's going to make any adjustments to the calculations if necessary. And then it's going to apply those to your super elevation sections and your lanes. Okay, so there's definitely a process that goes through with that. Um, so let's take a look at how that actually works in the software. So I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to go up to my corridors tab, and we're just going to take a quick look at loading up our rules file. So I'm going to go to Edit Super Elevation Rules. It's going to load up that dialog box that I showed you in my PowerPoint here. And we have a bunch of different categories here, a bunch of different options. So this first one here is general. This is where you can set some basic things like the units, the station rounding, cross slope rounding. Um, we've got this other portion of the dialogue here that's used for a slightly different super elevation method, which I'll talk about later in the session. Tables, this is where you have your super elevation rate tables for different um, super elevation rates and design speeds. You can see all that here. Here's our different transition tables for our design speeds and our lanes. Okay, now again, this, this whole XML rules file can be customized. So you can see here, Here's our radii, here's our super elevation rates, here's our E rates, and then our transition links here as well. Uh, if you don't want to use tables, we do have the option of doing super elevation equations. So we do provide a couple of those here with the software. If you need to make adjustments for your runout and your transition options, we do have some options for that. So if you have different transition types that you need to do other than linear. We can do parabolic, reverse parabolic, all these different things here. If you need to change the uh, placement of super elevation transition, so the percent on tangent, you can adjust here. And then we have some other options over here as well. You can make some adjustments for curve overlaps. You can also add key stations and things along the way. And um, we also have runtime variables as well. So those are just some of the things that we can do with the uh, super elevation rules file. So to begin, I'm just gonna go load up um, one of the ones that I have for my course here. So it's called AASHTO 2011 Imperial. I'm just gonna use that for this particular exercise. I haven't really changed too much in this. I'm just gonna use some of the standard options here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and load that up. Save that and close it. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the super elevation section. So I'm going to come up to my super elevation tools here. I'm going to say create super elevation section. Okay. So we're going to create the super elevation sections along this alignment. Okay, so I'll first give it a name. Then I want to locate my alignment. So I'm going to select my Route 97 extension. And then I want to key in the beginning. So I'm going to key in the beginning station with 538 plus 00. zero. This is going to define the starting point of my super elevation. And then I want to define the ending point. I'm just going to press Alt on my keyboard to lock to the end. And then here I'm gonna key in the minimum tangent length. Now this is important because if you have multiple design speeds on your project, you're probably gonna to wanna to key in a distance here that's less than the actual value of your tangent between curves if you have multiple design speeds. Since I just have one design speed on my project for this particular case, I'm gonna set this value very large so I just get one single super elevation section along my alignment. So I'm just gonna go ahead and accept that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my lane creation option to template. Now in the past, when we created our super elevation lanes, we had to manually key in the lane widths and the offset, and it was kind of a, a tedious process. Um, but recently, in the last couple versions of the software, we've added in this lane creation from template. So that's the method I'm going to use to create my lane. So again, I'm creating a divided highway situation here. So I have two lanes on the westbound two lanes on the eastbound side. So I'm gonna utilize a template in this case to help uh, streamline my process here and make it a little bit more efficient 
for lane creation. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept the template. It's going to prompt us to select a template. So then I'm going to go out into my template library and I'll press the Alt key down on my keyboard. And we'll take a look at my template here. So you can see I'm going to be utilizing a template that's called Four Lanes Inside Edge PGL. Um, we're going to be rotating our, our pavement about the inside edge here. So you can see here's my divided highway, two lanes for westbound, two lanes for eastbound, and that's going to define my lanes for me by selecting this template. Also, this template already has super elevation flag set up, so it knows which points to rotate and apply super elevation to. So keep that in mind as you're working along uh, when you're selecting a template using this method. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then we're good to go there. I'm just going to continue clicking through the prompts. And if we take a closer look in our file here, you can see now we have our lanes created automatically for us from that template and then our super elevation section. And just remember the super elevation section stores the properties of the super elevation. So it has the feature definition, the feature name, as well as the, uh, the limits, the station limits there. And then the lanes. Let's see, I have two lanes for the westbound side, two lanes for the eastbound side. And now at this point, we have not calculated the transitions yet. We haven't applied any type of calculations. We're just defining the, the geometric layout, right? So we're just defining the lanes and the lane widths and the limits that we want to create the super elevation between, right? So the next part of the process here is to utilize the, that rules file and calculate the super elevation transitions. So remember, everything um, as far as the calculations go are going to be computed from that super elevation rules file that I showed up in the very beginning. Okay. If you have spirals on your alignment, we can calculate spirals as well. So if you have spirals, compound curves, regular curves, doesn't really matter. It's all defined in that super elevation rule file that you or your agency would set up. Okay. So I just want to be clear about that. So Let's go ahead and calculate super elevation for our road. So our design criteria for this particular roadway um, that they've given me right off from the start here is they told me that the design speed is 70 miles an hour and my Emax is 6%. And they also told me that the pavement will be rotated about the inside edge of pavement. Okay, so it's a high speed facility here. So let's go ahead and calculate our super elevation. So I'm gonna come over to the calculate tab here. You're going to notice it says calculate super elevation, pretty self-explanatory. You're going to notice the uh, toolbox comes up here. You're going to see the rules file here. So this is the one I was showing you previously. Um, that's the rules file that we're going to be using. Here's our design criteria that we can set. So you could set it here right inside the dialog box, or we can just follow the heads up prompts. So I'm going to follow the heads up prompts. And I'm going to go ahead and select my section there. I'm going to right click to accept. There you will see the rules file once again. That's where the calculations are going to be pulled from. I'm going to accept that. So I'm just going to click through the prompts. Here's where I can set my Emacs. So I'm just going to use 6% there. And then as far as the transition length, L selection, I'm going to set that to the speed table. Again, we can do an equation or a table. So I'm just going to say speed table. And then for design speed, I'm going to set that at 70. And then the pivot method, I'm going to set for divided inside. And for open editor, I'm going to say no. And I'm just going to left click through the prompts to accept that. It's going to go through and perform the calculations. And then now you're going to see the lane uh, colors change a little bit. That indicates that the transitions have been applied and calculated to the super elevation lanes. So let's take a look at that real quickly here. So I'm going to come up to my element selector. Let's select one of our lanes here. And you can see we have the normal crown cross slope here, the half flat cross slope, and then where it starts to transition from uh, full super over this particular range here. Okay, if you need to make changes for whatever reason, th this text is dynamic, so you can just click on it to make a change to the station, as well as the cross slopes directly here in the plan view. Uh, there's many different ways to modify the super elevation once it's been actually calculate it in the file. So you can see here, anytime the text shows up as an orange looking color, um, that means it is available to be edited. Okay, if it shows up as gray, that means there's some type of constraint and it may be ruled to some other piece of um, super elevation information. So there's many ways that you can adjust 
and make changes to the super elevations, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay, so now we have the super elevation calculated and applied to our lanes. Let's take a quick look at the details of the calculations and the cross slopes in the station. So one way to get a quick look at that to make sure that it's doing things as you would expect is we will select our super elevation section here and we're going to go over to the super elevation report and we will come in here and take a look at the default report which is just the super elevation data style sheet and it's important to understand the information that's in the header box in this particular report notice it lists the station name it lists the alignment name that the super elevation is being calculated along. It also lists the rules file that was used, as well as the design speed, the pivot method, the E selection, and the speed table. Okay. And then down here, you can see the stations, the cross slopes, the point types. So if it's normal crown, level crown, reverse crown, full super, and then the transition type. So it gives you all that useful information here. And it shows you that for each, um, between each point that's on the template. Okay. So if I were to go and open up the template library, so you can get a better understanding of this, of how this is being named, we'll come into divided. We are using this template to create the lane widths. So when it creates those lanes that you see in the file, each of those lanes is given a specific name based on the template points in the template that have this super elevation flag assigned to it. So. When you're on the westbound side for this lane on the inside, the name of that lane would be this point and this point. Okay, and you can see the super elevation flag there. So anytime you want your template to calculate super elevation and follow those super elevation lanes, it's very important that you need to have the super elevation flags toggled on. Okay, so if we go back to our report here. And you see super elevation here where it says CL minus EOP. So that's what it's calculating for that, for those points in relation to the template. So hopefully that makes sense. There are some other reports over here we can take a look at. You can see we have super elevation cross slope, gives you some other information. Super elevation stations, shows you your delta G. And you have your super elevation calculations. If you want to dig it a little bit deeper, get a little bit more detail, detail about how some of the calculations are being performed and some additional information, select this super elevation calculation style sheet. And you can dig in a little deeper and see some of the other um, calculations here. I saw a couple of people had some questions about spirals. Yes, we can do spirals. So you can see some of that information is in here. If you had spirals, it would do that. Okay. So. Just wanted to point that out. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, we'll, we'll get into editing in a little bit. Now I've seen a couple questions about modifying some things here. Um, we'll show that in a little bit. So, so everything I've showed so far, the super elevation transitions are being calculated by the software using that super elevation rules file. Okay, so it's important to understand that. Okay that the transitions are being calculated from that rules file. And so what I want the point I want to make here is that if you were to change your horizontal geometry, if you were to change your horizontal alignment, say you change a curve and whatnot, that information will recalculate and things will move around based on the new curve values that you were to enter. So keep that in mind. All this stuff is rules based. It's all tied together. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.